Eco-extremists are set to beef up their campaign against the traditional British diet by proposing, wait for it, a meat tax. That's right, a meat tax, which would see us pay more for pork, lamb and chicken and could potentially see a levy on dairy products and other animal-derived food. What a load of bull. Why let the facts get in the way of the truth, which is that as omnivores, which means we eat everything, we have survived and thrived on a mixed diet of vegetables and animal protein. And as we've evolved over millions of years, we now find ourselves in command of nature and at the top of the food chain, the foremost species in the history of the planet by a mile. So I'd suggest we're doing all right on a meat-based diet. But why let the facts get in the way of a good story when eco-warriors, non-governmental bodies and even corporations like supermarkets are pushing a plant-based diet, which involves packaged, processed foods, which are chock full of water, vegetable oils, sugar and Frankenstein ingredients like soya and pea protein. Plant-based is a gold rush for so-called big food, the processed food industry who have been making us fatter and sicker for years. Plant-based food production involves far more water for things like almond milk than cow's milk and relies on vast monocrop agriculture, spraying vegetables and other things with an airborne slurry of fertilizer and pesticides. Let me tell you, vast fields of wheat, corn and soy is a disaster for biodiversity and the soil the self-same soil, which is enriched by ruminant animals like cows and sheep. Plus, there's all the packaging involved in plant-based food and the air miles. But that's the least of it. A plant-based diet doesn't seem to be great for your health either. Last year, a study from University College London revealed that vegan children grow up shorter with weaker bones than those who eat meat. It found five to 10 year olds on plant based diets were on average three centimeters shorter. They also had four to six percent lower bone mineral content and were more likely uh, to become deficient in vitamins like B12 than omnivores. Whilst medics in that study recommended a litany of supplements to prop up a plant based diet, the University of Vienna have this week urged vegans to do weightlifting. Vegans weightlifting, are you sure? They've barely got the energy to lift an avocado. Austrian researchers told the Mail newspaper, our study showed resistance training offsets diminished bone structure in vegan people when compared to omnivores. It gets worse. You may want to put down that corn on the cob. Take a listen to this. Health officials from the University of Leeds are warning that women are a third more likely to break their hip if they're on a vegetarian diet. A third more likely. Research has followed 26,000 women for 20 years and said some vegetarians may lack enough nutrients for good bone and muscle health, which raised the risk of breaks. Now, why would that be? Well, because meat and fish and eggs and cheese are full of this wonderful stuff called protein. I don't know if you're aware of it. And animal products are far higher in so-called bioavailable protein than their plant-based rivals. That means it's absorbed more easily into the body and used for the growth of muscles. Now, I'm a libertarian, so what goes on your dinner plate is entirely up to you. But this mission creep against meat must be called out and must be stopped. Not only is eating meat a human right, we should be able to eat what we want. These reports demonstrate it's necessary for human health. Mark my words, with all of the extra carbs and unhealthy industrial vegetable fats like sunflower and rapeseed oil, Plant-based Britain will be fatter and sicker than ever. So a plant-based diet requires extra vitamin pills just to make it healthy. It requires the consumption of mass-produced junk food, which, by the way, isn't cheap. And it leaves women with weak hips and delivers shorter children. Plus, you've got to do weight training just to get some strength in your bones. Not a ringing endorsement, is it? Of course, if it's your life choice not to eat meat or indeed a religious or cultural reason, fair enough, good luck to you. I've got close friends who are vegans and they love it. But this is the culture of coercion when we start talking about meat taxes, the culture of coercion that began during the pandemic, in which choices that people make for themselves are enforced upon the rest of us, muzzling our faces with those worthless, environmentally catastrophic masks, 
locking us in our homes, stopping us from going to work in the unproven hope that lockdowns would stop COVID, which, of course, they didn't. Pressurising people into taking a vaccine that doesn't stop the spread of the virus and which brings with it its own risks. So here we are in the age of coercion, in which unelected technocrats and an overgrown profligate state are now seeking to dictate every aspect of our lives, including what we eat. Eventually, there'll probably be a modern form of rationing in which your ribeye steak will be weighed out by a butcher following government quotas. The state will decide what kind of boiler you use, how many lights go on in your house and what time of the day it's acceptable to have dinner or make a cup of tea. This is not conspiracy, folks. This is reality, as reported in The Telegraph last month. There's the headline, switch dinner times and turn down the thermostat, how to survive the winter energy crisis. Just a suggestion at this stage, I'll grant you, but as we've learned over the last couple of years, what starts as a suggestion ends in an instruction. If you can't even decide when that you're having your cup of tea, this is not Britain at all, is it? Just a member of some hellish global confederation with our prime minister as a mere figurehead. GB News is the people's channel. And the only answer to all of this is people power. Peacefully and democratically, of course. The gradual curtailment of our freedoms, including what goes on our plate, is a template they tried out during the pandemic and with which they had unexpected success. So they'll keep on doing it. The idea of bodily autonomy, whether it's what goes in your arm or indeed in your gob, will soon be a thing of the past if it isn't already. So I say no to meat taxes. Well-raised meat, fish and eggs should in fact be subsidised and made cheaper to fix our health crisis. I say no to processed plant-based junk food and no to our great British farmers being bankrupted by these policies or seeing their land repurposed and sold off, rendering cows, sheep and goats as rare a sight in the British countryside as Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster. For as long as we're on this planet, we decide what we eat. I can't believe I'm even having to say this, but here we are. For those that seek to destroy British farming and make us weaker, sadder, fatter and sicker with a diet which is inappropriate for human health, frankly, you can burger off and get your hands off my sausage.